Good afternoon. Uh, another good day of work out here as we get a little bit closer to Saturday night scrimmage. It was awesome to see a couple of our alums out here today, Art Force, Mike Gilmartin. You guys have spent a lot of time on these practice fields. They're a little more relaxed today in their civilian clothes than they, maybe they were when they had their uniforms on, but, uh, but it was always good to see them and come back for practice. Questions? Kyle, do you have a, a sense of which players definitely won't scrimmage on Saturday yet? You know, Brandon won't scrimmage Saturday. Tyler won't scrimmage Saturday, even though we're getting closer. You know, I want them back on Monday. Um, who else? Like you said, you evaluate Agadosi, right? Yeah, Carlton Next won't. Yeah, Carlton will not, and Brian Gross will not. Okay. Uh, I think we got some good news today on Carlton that maybe he'll be a, a little sooner than later, but I think the earliest would be the end of next week. I don't think it'll be the beginning of next week. And Kyle, not Kyle, Kyle was out here today. Nick Borghese will be out here tomorrow, back again full speed, and, uh, and Kyle will not kick tomorrow, but that's just a scheduled day for him, and then they'll both be available Saturday night. So you're not going to be scrimmage. missing a lot? Right? No, we will not be missing a lot. Okay. With tomorrow being, or Saturday being a dress rehearsal, is tomorrow normal practice or are you going to treat it more like a walkthrough? It won't be a walkthrough. It'll be a practice. There won't be a lot of hitting going on, but it'll be, it'll be up tempo, high speed. You know, we don't scrimmage until Saturday night, so we'll have a chance to, to get their legs back a little bit. Uh, there'll be some special situations that we'll go through that we'll do full speed you know, during the scrimmage and, and some special teams things that we still need to get in that we'll do also you know, Saturday night at the scrimmage. But you know, we'll be out here whether we're in shoulder pads or, or the spider pads. Uh, but we'll be running around full speed. What have you seen about uh, from Nadir Barnwell through the early going? How's he fit into that cornerback equation? Nadir, Nadir's getting better. And he's getting better every day. I, I think Garif right now has had an excellent training camp. I, I think Lou Toller continues to do good things. Uh, there, there's no doubt that 23, Ian, is, is having a, an excellent training camp, probably leads the team in interceptions. It's probably not even close if you counted the spring and, and training camp. You know, so those three guys, and then you've, you've got some other guys in the mix. You know, a guy like Nadir, as he gets better and better, is going to push for more and more time. And, and there's always going to be opportunity on the sub packages to get a few more guys in the game. So yesterday, you um, were going to evaluate tape and for the offensive line. What's the status at right guard now? What... I think right now we, we've, got a, we've got a guy in Andre Civil who is, is really starting to come on. A, a guy in Chris Muller who is, is working really hard to get enough reps so that the game slows down. And that's the hardest thing when you're a young offensive lineman. There's, there's so many things in in training camp right now. There's more in right now than you'd ever carry into a game plan. That, that's just the nature of what training camp is. And I thought Chris made another step forward again today. Uh, my evaluation yesterday is I just think we were just a step late. And if you're mentally not exactly teed up where you need to be as an offensive lineman, then you have no chance against this defense because it's just there's too many moving parts. And I think Antoine gets a little healthier every day. So we've got three guys, and that's going to be one of the decisions we're going to have to make. I don't know if we'll be ready to make it at the end of the scrimmage, but you know, certainly by mid next week, we're going to have to make a decision as to who's going to start that game at right guard. Okay, how close? Situation where you maybe use two of them like you did last year with Taj and uh, Andre? Uh, it could happen. It's a possibility. I'm, I'm hoping one of them actually separates and makes it, you know, again, as with most things in the depth chart, the players make a lot more of those decisions than we do as coaches. Okay, how close is Tyler Croft to being full go or at least ready to do full contact stuff? I don't know about full go, but I think by Monday you'll see him in most of practice. Kyle, the absence of gassers this year, they were a staple here for years. Is that because of the conditioning of this team? Is that you just decided it's not necessary or you're saving their legs or what's the theory? It's, it's not so much saving their legs. We didn't do it last year. And, and, I and like two or three. We, we, we didn't do it at the end of practice last year in the summer. We, okay. In spring we've done it, okay. but not in summer. But in, spring, in the summer camps that I've been here for out of all of them, we have done it in the past. Yeah. It's, it's not something that's been far in a training camp. I just think our nine-week summer program has gotten so efficient. We have less than five players on our team that don't pass our conditioning test. You know, and now our condi the conditioning test is not the be-all, end-all of football conditioning, mm -hmm. but it's certainly a baseline. And I think our tempo of practice is good. If I didn't think our tempo of practice was good, then we would run more at the end. But I really believe that practice is conditioning, and the tempo of your practice should be the way you condition the players. So you know, we've been out here probably a little bit longer each day than maybe we were last year because it's a little bit younger team. We have, I think, more guys vying for more different roles on the team. Uh, but the gas was at the end. I feel like we're in very good shape right now. Kyle, how much of your uh, red zone offense have you installed to this point? All of it. Yeah. And I guess given your preference, would, would you prefer to be a, a ground and pound team in, in, inside the red zone or given the number of red zone targets you have at receiver, how would, you know, how would that, that situation work? I have no preference other than I'd like to be a red zone team that counts by sevens. How uh, is Gary okay? 
I mean, he's, his arm is fine. There's no issues with the arm. You're just being cautious. Absolutely. Yeah, we had a couple of days scheduled in for him during the doubles, not to take both practices. I think that's in, the, in his best interest. The starting quarterback, by nature, takes more reps every day than all the other quarterbacks. So it really, it, it, it helps in two ways. One, it, it's a scheduled rest for him that keeps him on schedule. But also, it allows those other players in the depth chart to really define their roles, which is important. You know, those, the second, the third quarterback, those decisions are critical because you're always one play away from, from having to go to it. It's unusual because he said he had never missed a practice before in high school or college, and now all of a sudden he's missed two, in the, two this week. That sounds, or, like a, a, that sounds like a question for Coach Toll. We'll have to check with Coach Toll and see <laughs> yeah, if there's, yeah. there's accurate information being given there. Got time for two more. How, how much input do you have with uh, Ron Prince being a former coordinator yourself? Input in terms of what? In terms of play call, direction of the offense, et cetera. The, the most important thing to me is exactly what you just said, the direction of the offense. You know, Ron has been an offensive coordinator. Uh, he's an excellent play caller. He has an excellent vision of what the offense will be in terms of the specifics of the runs and the passes. And for me, it's more philosophical than anything. You know, and Ron's done a great job, and it's the same thing on defense. You know, Dave understands what I want to be on defense, and Joe understands what I want to be on special teams. And the day-to-day -day details of those jobs, that's what they're here for. When does the, um, at the, is it at the end of camp that the Fresno you know, start to uh, ratchet things down with Fresno? When will that be? There's certainly a, uh, there's a lot of things we're doing right now that I think will, will surface in that game plan. But next Wednesday will be the first day that we okay. specifically go and, and then start the scout teams, et cetera, and then okay. really go focus on Fresno. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right.